Lauren Darrell. Yeah, that's the Weaver again. It's 528 West Coast time. It's 25 degrees out here in the Antelope Valley. It's Saturday the 6th of January 2024. I'm confused. Caught the act concerning about Michael Bolton. We didn't hear a word about it through the through the press. CNN said something about it, but hell, the local didn't make a that much of a fuss, and I guess I wasn't paying attention to all the entertainment news happening in some of the local channels. There's a guy named Michael Rubin. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Sam Rubin on uh, KTLA. Well known throughout the entertainment industry. I didn't keep up with him on how uh, how things are going with him. It was Mr. Bolton and his uh, with his head issue. Cancer sucks. Uh, see, this is what confuses me at this point over here. It's the um, story and the conflicting emotions regarding the cancer situation. See, I don't, I don't get it. Maybe I don't have a context or perspective on this one. So I have been trying to go over the information, and I went over few articles that you did post that say the same thing that you know he had cancer and he had it taken care of and he's recovering and he wants to get out there on the road he wants to perform because that's what he wants to do okay i can understand that that's a performer that's that's an artist who wants you know wants to keep uh, continuing to get at it and you raise up the issue concerning about your father and God rest his soul. I'm sorry that he uh, passed away from the cancer. Medical conditions like that are difficult even to handle these days, even despite medical advancement we have. That would also include open heart surgery. It was said back in the 70s, four-year-olds didn't didn't have that much of a chance to survive open heart surgeries, and yet I'm one of the lucky ones. I was told that a long while ago. I didn't consider myself lucky. I passed away and came back to life. Somebody upstairs wanted me alive. As for your father's situation, growing that tumor in his head, medical science wasn't up to speed. They weren't. I guess they didn't have vascular or physicians who were capable of performing that task of doing surgery that delicate to remove it or maybe it was in a position that it had that they couldn't get to they would make a science fiction movie fantastic voyage of miniaturizing people with advanced technology to get rid of a tumor from the inside <coughs> kids would think about that one because it was just a movie but the reality of it was we just didn't have the medical or the scientific know-how at least not that much to do that kind of delicate surgery without severely injuring the person I don't know what it would have been like if my mother or my brother or any one of my relatives actually had brain surgery, how we would have been able to deal with it. I know that dealing with heart issues was a major factor in my family. I had to worry about my grandmother all the time. We had to worry about Aunt May. And during those days, she was a very frail woman. Dealing with the loss of her husband wasn't exactly helping this 
this lady uh, through her situation. What scares me is next few years I'm going to be in her situation. But I'm not old and frail. I'm just getting older and fatter. Or trying not to be anyway. I'm sorry that your father wasn't lucky. He looked like he was a good guy, a decent guy. Cancer was still being treated as an unknown explored territory out there. If they could see it, they could try removing the thing. But there are certain areas that they didn't try to touch because of complications. I don't know how to ask or suggest how to resolve the, you said indignant, you said the word indignant on this one. I guess there's still feelings out there that even we haven't found a way to get resolved. Adult-wise, we could figure it out, but the kid inside of us still has no option and no clue of how to figure it out. Probably wondered how come these things happened. And if they did, why? Why did it happen? Why did your father have brain cancer? And why couldn't they do something about it to get rid of it? And why they made the remarks? Well, they they made the remarks because they were indifferent. Perhaps they didn't take people's emotions too kindly at that point. And yeah, it was off base of what they said. I'm not going to defend it. But to think of them as a damn vegetable and you know, watch him weaving things left and right or trying to see whether or not if his brain was still working one way or another. Maybe it was not exactly therapy, but just Try to see what kind of brain activity that they had. They couldn't do that for a heart situation. I mean, if you had a heart situation, you you don't do things like that. Back in the 70s, they... I guess they were very indifferent to patients' well-being, mentally. Well, they worry about the physical, but they wouldn't talk to you to talk to the families about the mental health portion of it. I can attest for that one. I'm a bad, I'm a kid with a bad ticker. I had a bad ticker. I keep showing the people my scar. And believe me, I had a big ass honking scar when I was a kid. Kind of made me feel different, you know? Kind of made me feel weird. I'm a kid that survived heart surgery. These days, it's commonplace. They can do invasive surgery. Little tiny slits sometimes, or maybe, maybe something else. Just to get something repaired or maybe they still do open heart surgery but the technology is a hell of a lot easier to deal with and their recovery time may be a little faster or maybe not I don't know I haven't kept up with the latest heart surgeries out there to see what kind of techniques that they're using but looking at my own damn scars fading out I still have the mental scars dealing with and yeah, I, even I got stigmatized. I'm the kid with the bad tick. I mean, how would you like to deal with a mother that uh, identified her kids as nut job or the bad ticker? Which one? Oh, where are you on? How are your kids doing? Which one? The nut job or the bad ticker? And it would piss them off. It's like, you, you said that? Yeah, she would say that. 
She would say she had said that too many times to a lot of people. I'm growing up and I'm hearing the stories, but I'm also hearing it out of her mouth. Some of our friends are like, eh, 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 eh. they don't even know how the hell to, to deal with it. How to deal with a lady who's got a, who's got issues that they're like, they got what? It's like saying, why don't they have leprosy? Indignant? I guess so. I mean, the nonchalant attitude of dealing with someone who's got brain cancer that they can't deal with, so now they can just insult the crap out of them? Is that the only way that they know how to, to give aid and comfort to the family who has an afflicted... Yeah, that's it, afflicted. Anyway. It's not infected. Like we're dealing with the damn biological nightmare the past few years and still still pops its ugly head. How the hell will we be dealt with here? Think about this one here, Don. We've been dealing with a biological nightmare since the damn thing came on, on, on the scene and started giving us issues left and right. Then we got people being indignant about the damn thing making fun of it left and right, or fun of the people who have got it, or trying to get immunizations for it. We're living in this kind of environment for that one. How is our generation going to be looking at us? The future generation is going to be looking at us regarding this one here. And yet we have the same damn contempt for the people in the past. If they survived brain surgery, they were lucky. Or were they? Depending on how size that tumor was. If they could get into it. But they didn't have the technology. They didn't have the techniques. They didn't have what they had to take care of it. At least to, to my knowledge, anyway. And yeah, it would be improper for them to say something stupid about it. It's like saying to you, upfront personal, and just be callous about it. And say, well, I'm going to say something stupid about it here. No offense. Your father had a basketball in his head, or he had a basketball for his head because of that cancer? Ha ha ha. the kids in the neighborhood at your size, at your age. How's your old man? How's he go his head going to pop? Back then, kids were cruel. How about this one? Show us your zipper so you can we can see your heart. Does your chest unzip? I had to deal with that shit on a constant basis sometimes. I had to take it easy because of my damn heart. And yeah, I had to deal with the kids my own damn age. Being stupid like they are. They think it's a fucking joke. They thought it was a damn joke. If they knew the life I lived during those days, shit. Or how about this? How about this one, Daryl? This will get you. Survive a car accident. And then your head's wrapped up like a mummy and you're going to school and kids still torture you left and right and use you for target practice. There's this game called Socko. Hang on a second. I need a liquid. Two goalie boxes. Two combat areas. Center line. The idea <coughs> is elimination. You get the ball. You're holding on to the ball. 
and you're not knocked against on your ass. It's a hard, well, it's a rubbery ball. It's inflatable. But hard rubber of sorts. And it leaves marks on you. I had to constantly do this to my face because the kids constantly aimed for my face. And they would choose up sides. I'm the last. Not because of, la because of my, well, because of injury. No, because I'm white. I'm dealing with, I'm dealing with blacks. I'm dealing with Latina. That was the neighborhood. I moved from one particular area that didn't have this damn game into another neighborhood which had this damn game on the elementary side. <laughs> and I'm coming in with injuries. Open heart surgery, still recovering from that damn thing. Takes years. But also, facial injury because I just survived a car accident. Kids can be cruel. The adults kept putting me down when I first came into the high, into the elementary school until I was well enough and cleared by medical doctors that I'm able to participate in regular activities. There are no special programs or anything during that time. There was something called mainstream. Kids with mental or actually mostly physical ailments trying to get back in to the mainstream of everybody else trying to learn things. We take it slowly. We get your help if you need it. If you're having problems catching up, you need uh, coaching of any sort, they'll help you out. But certain programs didn't happen when I was a kid. I when I turned into a teenager and then they had a mainstream program out there to help me out. Didn't help me out in Arlita. I, used, I had to be on my own. Soccer was one of those vicious games. I was always having black and blue all over the place. I protect my face. Screw the damn chest. Protect the damn face. When I got into that car accident with my brother, oh, I did videos about this one a long time ago. I buried in a wind file somewhere. I had busted my face to the point where my mother had to bring over an earlier picture of me just to have the surgeons try to see what the hell I looked like so they could work doing my face. I used to be a cute, cute kid during those days. I also had a strong nose, but the problem is I kept busting it too many damn times falling into, let's see, uh, let's see, running into brick walls. <laughs> Uh, falling out of tree houses. How about getting my face smashed by landing on a metal rim of a high rise outdoor swimming pool while trying to dive into the damn thing? Got pushed into that one. Literally. Boop! Ah, splat! Turned the water red. So I go into a neighborhood and they go into a school where physical violence, not just, well, they discouraged strongly about kids getting into fights, but you know, it happened anyway. But for me, I'm white. One of the rare ones out there was white. It's white. Racial. And since I came in with injuries, open season. Let's make a bleed. Put him in the game of Sacco. Tetherball would have been easier to deal with. Maybe. At least that would have been something to deal with. Put yourself in on that damn thing while trying to keep that ball going up the, up the pipeline there. But Sacco? Oh, no, 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 no. There's one guy named Hector. 
What was his Gilbert? One of those two names. What an asshole kid. That always made fun of me. Kids can be vicious and cruel. At one time, we did get into a fight. I was going to punch his lights out. I got stopped by a teacher. We had a rivalry ever since I left. Well, I don't know what the hell happened after I left elementary school. I never bothered to keep up with the assholes. I never did. But in that game, the sides, uh, the uh, ends would throw balls. <laughs> not at the other end, but at the one facing them. And two goals. And then you had the compartments. And the compartments would be throwing balls at each other. If the guys on the outside got balls, they'd be throwing it at the guys in the compartment. And those guys would go to the outside to throw balls at the survivors. Elimination. Sacco. Yeah, tell me about it. There's a thing about us old farts here, dude. We got memories, we got stories. And right now, my mother had been waiting to go outside, and she fell like asleep on the couch, covered up, because it's still 25 degrees outside, which is quite uh, freezing for us out here on the West Coast. Uh, let me do a part two on this one. They've opened up a can of worms.